Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming into the show. It is week one. So let's break down Bears versus Packers on the leg front. Let's bring on my co-host. He's former Bears defensive end. He's CHGO's very own Fox 32's Brew and View, CHGO, West End Golf Course, Corey Wooten. What's up, Corey? What's up, Joey? Football's back. Uh, tomorrow's the first opening game. Kansas City, right? Start Starting them off. So it's going to be a good one. Start off the NFL season. Looking forward to this weekend. This is a huge game, right? Bears, Packers, the rivalry, um, changing of the guard. Aaron Rodgers not there anymore. Insert Jordan Love. Uh, Justin Fields. All of all of the hype after last year, running the football, what he could do as an explosive player, still people doubting him as a passer. This is an opportunity to prove to the the all the NFL fans out there that that he can be a passer in this league. And I think it starts week one with him building confidence. Corey, if the uh, the Chiefs beat the Lions on Thursday, the Lions, the presumptive NFC North favorite to win the division, the Chicago Bears might have a half game lead on them before they even take a snap on Sunday. That's right. I'm brimming with optimism right here, Corey. Um, look, you know, we've spent all summer long talking about this team. So I think there's enough talk, and I want to just dive right into the keys. Corey's keys to a victory to get the okay. Chicago Bears to 1-0 and on the season versus the Green Bay Packers. News and notes, nothing much. to. We're taping this on a Wednesday. Nothing much right now. Jaquan Brisker, limited participant. Eddie Jackson, limited participant. The Bears look like they might be healthy for this game. So, Corey, give me your first key. What is the first key to the Chicago Bears beating the Green Bay Packers in week one? Defensively stopping the run is something that they've struggled with all of last year, right? They couldn't stop the run the past few years, actually. And you you look at what Green Bay does well, right? They're they're two headed monster running back, Aaron Jones and Dylan. Those those that's the engine that's going to run this offense, especially with a new quarterback, Jordan Love, in there. Really trying to get this confidence up. They're going to try to take the pressure mm-hmm. off them and really rely on that running game. So in this offseason, we got a big guy in Andrew Billings that's going to try to clog up that middle. Justin Jones is another year in this system. My key thing with him is if he can get off the football and be that engine that runs the defense, the three technique, get that penetration in the backfield, disrupt that run, and then Walker on the left side, feel pretty good about that. Uh, Yannick is a, is a guy that mostly is a pass rusher, but if he can get off the football, set the edge, I think the Bears can be successful because the penetration, the strength of this team is the linebacking core and the secondary. So if they can really get off the football up front, stop that run, put the pressure on Jordan Love in his first big game of the season at Soldier Field with the crowd rocking, I think the Bears can be successful and win this game. Easily the biggest key, Corey. It's such a fantastic point that you're making where everyone, the microscope is on Jordan Love. Is he good? Can he take over the mantle? Is he the third next Hall of Famer in the Green Bay Packers franchise at quarterback? But, but Corey, it's not going to matter if we can't stop the run, right? Nothing makes a young quarterback feel more comfortable than getting that run game going, be able to use some play action, getting that clean pocket. So, I'm 100% with you, man. The easiest way for Jordan Love to own the Chicago Bears again is if A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones are running down our throat. We knew it was a huge weakness last year. They brought in some guys to hopefully fill in the gaps and hopefully shore up that unit. It's still, you, Corey, you know the defensive line. You know That's our biggest concern here on Believe in Bears still entering the season, so I'm right there with you. Um, Corey's key number two. What is key number two to get a victory against the Green Bay Packers in week one? Uh, offensively get the run game going right we we have a three-headed yeah, monster sides. you know uh when you look at khalil herbert foreman roshan johnson i mean three-headed monster you know pick your poison at that point you know khalil herbert is is the uh is the lightning back the other two are more of the thunders but when you talk about a guy like roshan johnson he's a very intriguing guy because he sat behind Bijan robinson which everyone knows was arguably the best prospect to come out in a while and we we let go of David Montgomery. So people are thinking about, okay, in, in the in the pass protection game, Khalil Herbert doesn't give you the best. There was a couple times last year where, you know, he got bull rushed, he got beat around the edge, you know, he wasn't doing exactly what he's supposed to do. Roshan Johnson in the preseason really was great in that pass protection. Talk about break tackles, being able to grind them out. Um, I think he's going to be a guy that really surprises people because if he wasn't behind uh, – B. John Robinson, he'd be a guy that they talk about, uh, you know, as, as one of the best in the league. So um, he, I, I think he hasn't even scratched the surface of what he can do. So if they can get this run game going with, with the with the three-headed monster, 
you know, then be able to work that play action. I think it'll take the pressure off Justin Fields because I told you this game is very critical for setting himself up for success for the season, right? Huge game on the stage. Everybody's watching. Can he throw the ball? Can he not? And he doesn't have to light it up, Joey. He has to be efficient, right? And you look at yeah. people talk about him and Jalen Hurts. They're very comparable. And, and, and people might, might – Think of this the wrong way, but I think Justin Fields is more talented than Jalen Hurts. I'm not, I'm not saying that he put together a better package last year or anything like that, or he is this year. But what I'm trying to say, when you look on on, on paper, Justin Fields is a better runner. He's a better better passer. He's a, he's a better arm, right? Accuracy is something he needs to improve on. And you look at the growth from Jalen Hurts from 2021 to 2022. I'm hoping that Justin Fields has that same growth. And if he can complete the downfield ball, Look at A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts. I'm hoping the same thing happens with D.J. Moore and Justin Fields. So if Justin Fields can take care of the football, be efficient with his passes, take what the defense gives him. And if he can be in that 225 to 250 range with two touchdowns, some good scrambles here or there, being smart, learning how to get out of bounds, not take these hits and manage the game well, I think this will start him off. On, on, the, on the right foot and confidence going into week two and the rest of the season. So pushing that a little bit forward, I want to stay on the offensive side of the ball just real quick, Corey, because I think Bears fans are so excited to see DJ Moore in a Bears uniform. But, you know, from what I saw last year, and I got an opportunity to talk a little bit earlier with one of our Believe Sports colleagues, Mike Wally, former offensive lineman, covers the Green Bay Packers. And we kind of really drilled in on the disappointing nature. They've got a lot of first rounders on defense. But that linebacker core, that secondary, it isn't necessarily, you know, one of the better units that they've had in that Packers uniform the last couple of years. And I just think that matchup of Jair Alexander versus DJ Moore is going to be one to watch. Um, can you yeah. talk about that a little bit? And, and do you yeah. think maybe uh, are the Bears going to be able to do what they want to do with DJ Moore in this first game when you do have Alexander across from him? Or are you going to see a little decoy action? And, and really, this kind of also leads back to your original point. Getting that run going is definitely going to help out that matchup, too, as well. Exactly. I think, first and foremost, getting that run game going is, is going to help out the pass, right? You can, when it, when it, Whenever you can, you can work that run, then the play action comes, and, and then teams are off balance. So if they get that running game going, uh, I, I honestly like DJ Moore against 99% of corners out there. He's a guy that can go up and get it. I mean, he's been playing with bad quarterbacks the past couple of years, still put up great numbers. So it's DJ Moore versus everybody this year. You know, I'm really looking forward to that matchup. And then you talk about the weapons across the board, right? You know, Cole Komet, he's a guy that's really going to make his mark in that red zone. Um, you know, a guy like Robert Tanyan as well that's had experience playing for Green Bay, been a viable red zone threat as well. Roshan Johnson, foreman in, in the red zone as well. So I'm looking at all that. And if Chase Claypool can come alive, he's a guy that really had a, a great training camp, was banged up a little bit here and there. If he can stay healthy and be what he was in, in Pittsburgh, right? When the pressure was off him, when he had Antonio Brown, there was no pressure on him. All of a sudden, he really comes alive. So that's what I'm hoping he can have because this is a huge year for him about his future of his career, right? Fourth year, contract year. If he can have a, a year of, of 800 to 900 yards receiving and be a really good red zone threat, this will be huge for him, whether it's the Bears or another team, to take them. <laughs> so I really I really like the weapons here that the Bears have, and I think this is going to be a, a good week and good matchups-wise as far as the wide receivers, tight ends, first the linebacking core, and the secondary. Yeah, I was going to say, if Claypool uh, puts up 900 yards, I don't think he'll be on the Bears, but the dude will get paid. And good for him. You know, good for him. He gets a chance to show out. I think he's a really talented player. Um, Corey, um, give us your final key, man. What's Corey's final key to a Bears win in week one? Yeah, my, my final key is 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 Justin Fields, right? Be, being being efficient in this game and limiting turnovers. That That's a key thing, right? And, and he didn't turn the ball over crazy uh, crazy amount of times last year um but there were some times a lot of a lot of fumbles a lot of fumbles yeah. not lost right exactly you know? so, yeah. so there, there was there's a lot of decisions he has to clean up so coming into this year we have to clean up some of those issues right the fumbles sometimes when you're scrambling and it's not there throw throwing it to a defender throwing it out of bounds live to play another down so justin fields if he could show that maturity and that growth in that regard i i believe he could be very successful because he has all the tools, Joey. He has a cannon of an arm. It's about him getting confidence. 
And that's the key with any young player. The pressure is on his shoulders. He's feeling it, right? Everyone's saying that he, he is the next franchise quarterback. A lot of people are saying he's not. So he has to go fight against all those stereotypes. He can't throw the ball. He can't do this. He can't do that. So this is a huge point for him to establish what he can do. Because if you look on paper, you know, I, I compare him to, to Jalen Hurts a lot. Jalen Hurts had, what was it, 22 touchdowns and nine interceptions last year, right? I believe. Actually, 20, 22 touchdowns, six interceptions, 13 six rushing touchdowns last year. 13 yeah. rushing touchdowns and about 3,600 yards passing, right? 3,600 yards passing and, and seven or 800 in the rushing category. So he definitely exactly. got over 4,000 4, all-purpose. So, so when, you, when, you, when you look at just from a passing standpoint, Justin Fields can easily attain that, right? That's those those aren't numbers that blow you out the water. That's why I'm saying oh. with 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 this offensive line and with these weapons, Justin Fields can easily do that. But it's about taking what the defense gives you. You look at Jalen Hurts; he doesn't force things a lot of the times, right? He takes what the defense gives you. He uses his feet when he needs to. And what I love the most about him is he's smart about the hits he takes, right? He gets out of bounds. He slides, and that's sometimes Justin Fields. That's why he was getting banged up as the season went on because he wasn't being smart about how he takes the hits. So if Justin Fields can be like Jalen Hurts and just be efficient in that regard, I believe he will be a top 10 quarterback in this league this year because if going off of, of Jalen Hurts' progression, Justin Fields can already has the rushing attack. He can rush better than Jalen Hurts. Now it's about cleaning up that and being more accurate and efficient. And I think the, the wide receiver core that they have is going to make Justin Fields right. And that's what every great quarterback has, is that security blanket. You look at Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey is that guy. So every great quarterback has that security blanket that they can go mm -hmm. to and go up and get that 50 50 goal. Yeah, when we talk about 4,000 total yards is an attainable number, keep in mind, I think Justin Fields came just under 3,300 last year. And the first four games of the season, Corey, were historically abysmal offensive numbers. Uh, the pass attempts in the game, the passing yards in the game. So even if you get a little bit back to baseline there, he's got an easy shot at 4,000 for sure. One of my big key, uh, one of my big keys, honestly, in the game is, Corey, we talked about it last week in our season preview. I just think this is a huge thing for me, and it's kind of a broad topic, and we're going to get a chance to see it on the field this Sunday. Is I just think there's no reason in the world that when the Bears get inside the 20-yard line, an opposing defense should be terrified. Um, I think Justin Fields can be one of the most dangerous red zone options. And when you see teams that have great offenses, you see the Joe Burrows, the Patrick Mahomes, once they get into that area, as a fan, when you're watching that, you're starting to think touchdown, you're not thinking field goal. I think for too long, Chicago Bears offenses, when we get in the red zone, are settling for a field goal, hoping for a touchdown. And I think this is the time. And we have the type of quarterback where Justin Fields needs to get more efficient in that area. And I just think those three or four extra points a game, I think it means something. And, you know, this is the opportunity that when they get down there to execute, be lethal down there, uh, make it really hard for the defense to scheme up and figure out what you're going to do. Obviously, protect your body um, in that regard, too, as well, especially when you get on those short yardage situations. But that's just kind of what I want to see. I think that's the next level for Justin Fields. Yeah. And I think if he can have efficiency in the red zone early, again, another confidence builder that will help Justin Fields moving forward. That, that's the key to this week is a confidence building team for the Bears in general, right? They were a team last year that only won three games, right? They were in a lot of games against teams that on paper they shouldn't have been in. This roster has a lot more talent across the board. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, right? There's a couple of positions on the defensive line that we need to shore up a little more. The linebacking core, the secondary, very pleased with, with, with what's there and what they've showed during the preseason the wide receiver core, the running back room, the offensive line kind of sucks that Tevin Jenkins is out. But I, I think I think that they can maintain Cody Whitehair as a guy that's played in this league, that can step in there. You can move Lucas Patrick to center, which some people don't like, but Lucas Patrick didn't even play center. He played 12 snaps last year at center. And he's not a guard. Same people, so you can't same judge people him that up. applauded it. Same people that applauded the signing a year previous, though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, I exactly. Know. We didn't even get to I, see I'm with him. You. But, yeah. But he, he's familiar with Getsy's offense. He know, He's the quarterback of the offensive line. So I, I think the Bears, uh, this is a huge game for them, right? This is about their legacy. And Green Bay has been dominating the Bears uh, from before we can remember, from Brett Favre, um, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, they got the best of us. I mean, in, in the series, from when Brett Favre was there all the way up until last year, Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay dominated them. 
Aaron Rodgers, discount, double check. I own you, disrespect. Um, so it's a changing of the guard now. And Justin Fields has to establish himself as a winner. And I'm not saying the game simply relies on him, but a huge reason that a quarterback, when you win games, you know, it, it's on you. And when you lose games, it's on you. Regardless of if, if it's deserved or not, if the defense didn't play well or whatnot, but Justin Fields, this this big shoes to fill in Chicago and, and finally have their franchise quarterback. So I'm looking forward to what he can do in this week one matchup and silence some of these critics and showcase what he can what he can do. Corey, unless you got any more keys, man, I'm ready for final score. How you feeling? Yeah, I'm I'm ready to go, man. Uh, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go, I'll go first. So I think All this right. is going to be a tight one. Um, I'm going to say 24 uh, 17 Bears. Mm. I think I think it's going to be an efficient game. I don't think the stats are going to woo or wow you. I think they're really going to get the running game going. I think Justin Fields will be efficient. I think he'll throw for anywhere from 220 to 250, and he'll throw a touchdown or two in the red zone. I think he'll, he'll scramble well. I think the running game will. will, will go well i think they'll go they'll go probably for 150 to 175 yards rushing um and this defensively i think they're, they're going to really stop the run because that's something they've been preaching the signing of billings um this is a huge week for the for the team we don't have all the pass pressure that we want but if you can stop the run you can figure out ways to generate pressure whether that's stunts whether that's uh pressures that they're, they're dialing up with the talented linebackers so I think this is going to be a tight one, but it's going to be a confidence-building game for both sides of the football, 24-17. Yeah, Corey, I'm not that far off um, from your prediction. I also have the Chicago Bears winning week one. I got them at 23-20. to um, You noticed that I just talked about efficiency in the red zone, and now that score says, hey, Joey, what are you doing? You're saying two touchdowns and three field goals? Um, I'm saying that is a key to what I want to see. I'm not saying that that comes to fruition week one. Um, but what I one of my big uh, calls and predictions right now is that I just believe that the Chicago Bears this season are going to be a home run hitting team. We got guys on this team that can take the ball to the house at any moment. DJ Moore, Khalil Herbert, Justin Fields, name it. So I'm just going to say one of those scores goes for over 60 yards. I think the Chicago Bears do enough to win, put up enough offense in this game. Maybe it doesn't look pretty offensively at times. You make enough plays on defense. Jordan Love. Sorry, maybe this isn't your coming out party just yet. Um, close game, Chicago Bears win uh, 23 to 20. Nice. I like it. I like it. I like it. So this, this is a huge week for them. If they can start off with a win, Joey, I think they'll set themselves up. And, um, you know, because there's some teams out there that can go down 0-2, like Patriots we, we've seen in years, go down, you know, lose two in a row and then bounce back. Or, you know, the Chiefs go through some ups and downs. Uh, they're, they're a team that can come back from that. The Bears – I think the way everything's going, they have to start off this season strong to build that momentum because this is a team that, that has been bad for a few years. So if they can stack a win week one, week two, and then all of a sudden build some confidence, I think it'll set them up to be successful this season. Yeah, not to jump too far ahead, Corey, but I mean, this game is pretty crucial. When you talk about not going on two, Chicago Bears cannot go 0-2. They absolutely cannot because guess who they play week three? The Kansas City Chiefs. So exactly. guess what? You got to win one of these first two weeks, my man, if you want to keep your exactly. season on the rails here pretty early on. You go to Tampa. I understand Tampa's not trying to win a game, but everyone talks about September in Tampa with that heat and humidity. Maybe you can tell us a story next week a little bit about what's that like yep. if you've ever done that before. But I heard that it affects players in a big way in terms of endurance and in the second half. So, yeah, you got a game at home. Any game at home should be a winnable game that you got to take care of, and and this is no other, even especially when it's against the Packers. So, man, I'm I'm right there with you. And there's only thing one left to do is just to sit back and and wait and watch because the NFL it is at our doorstep. This was Believe in Bears. My name is Joey Christopoulos. You can follow me at Joey Sports Guy. Uh, my co-host Corey Wooten at Corey Wooten. See uh, two O's, two T's on that. Follow us at Believe Sports. And thank you for listening to us wherever you get your podcasts or watching us on YouTube, whether it is on Sports Talk Chicago or on the Believe channel. Listen to us on SiriusXM. Thank you so much for coming in. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.ag. 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V. Corey, man, we, I mean, dude, I'm just ready, dude. I'm not going to sleep. Am I going to sleep yeah. the next couple of days? Uh, take us home on a great pod, man. Good to see yeah, you. Man. Hope you, you, talk to you got to. Another another great pod. The season's back. Big, big opening week game. Packers rivalry. Um, it's going to be a good one. I think this this one is, is going to be the game 
where the Bears establish what their identity is going to be. You know, a, a hard-nosed, smash-mouth football team that gets the run game going, works the play action, uses their weapons, and defensively, they grind them out. You stop the run. You don't have the crazy sack numbers, but you're able to get off on third down situations. So I think that's going to be the mantra of this team. And I'm looking forward to seeing that week one. So after the game, we're, we're going to get to the reactions, the good, the bad, the ugly. Hopefully there's a lot, lot more good than bad. Um, but this is a, a big week for, for Bears fans and, uh, you know, Chicago Bear Nation. So uh, excited, excited for it. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we'll get next week to breaking everything down. And, uh, yeah, follow us. We, we love the comments, love the support, and uh, let, let us know if there's anything else you want us to talk about in any of these. Um, but, yeah, so always always a pleasure, Joey, and, and looking forward to next week. Be well, be safe. Please be good to each other, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, guys, there's only one thing left to do. It's time to bear down. Let's go. We bear down, baby. baby. <laughs> I'm ready. Let's roll, man. Yeah.